Don't even start with the, Alan, I thought you were supposed to be on hiatus jokes. Because, yeah, I, 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 will, I will publicly confess, I fucked up this hiatus. I fucked up this hiatus. I was supposed to be on hiatus beginning with Monday, August 5th, and now it's Wednesday, August 21st. So I'm about, what, two and a half weeks into my supposed hiatus, and now this would be my fourth? Yeah, this would be my fourth video that I've done when I was supposed to be on hiatus. Okay, this is what I want to talk about. Two-thirds of what I want to talk about is just simply stuff to do with the issue of credibility. Credibility. What does it mean to have credibility? Some people use that term a lot. And I've used that term recently in like two or three videos, credibility. What does it mean to have credibility? If I had to give two quick examples, let's say you're marketing yourself as a personal nutritionist, a personal nutritionist. And... If you're a personal nutritionist, that means you are proposing to help people eat healthier food, to have healthier eating habits. So number one, if you maintain healthy eating habits yourself, that would lend itself to you having credibility. That would lend itself to you having credibility. And number two, if the advice you give to others and they follow your advice, then their eating habits will slowly but surely improve and that their, their overall health as a result will improve. That will also lend itself to solidifying your credibility. So that's when you would have credibility as a personal nutritionist is if you a develop and maintain healthy eating habits yourself and the advice you give to men and women has been proven to help them improve their eating habits. That, that would give you credibility. On the flip side, if you market yourself as a personal nutritionist, but you you regularly or semi-regularly eat a bunch of bullshit food, you know, ice cream, cake, cookies, ju basically junk food. And even worse, you giving people advice that allows them to eat a bunch of bullshit food and they're healthy, their eating habits either stay the same or get worse, then you would lose credibility. You will lose credibility. So when it comes to somebody being a self-help guru, some types of self-help guru, they have, that's the most important thing, and I've said this multiple times to a self-help guru, is you have to have credibility. If you have questionable credibility, then you're not really in a position to truly market yourself as any type of self-help guru. Like, I would give you an example with me. Most of my advice centers around letting women know in a confident, upfront, specific, and straightforwardly honest manner what my romantic desires, interests, and intentions are or what my strictly sexual desires, interests, and intentions are. And that's what, what I, of course, refer to as mo, the Mo One approach. The Mo One approach. Mo Two is when a man is overly cautious, very polite and flattering, and very vague and ambiguous and beat around the bush. So if, if most of the women I was dealing with in my life, it was proven that I was exhibiting more mold two behavior with women than mold one behavior. 
then my credibility would diminish. Or even worse, if I was exhibiting mode three behavior, mode three behavior is when you're either just flat out cowardly in regard to approaching women and initiating a conversation with them, or you have enough confidence to initiate conversations with women, but you tend to exhibit behavior that's dishonest, phony slash disingenuous, and just misleading and manipulative. For example, if I was going around lying to women and giving them the misleading impression that I wanted long-term monogamous sexual companionship, when in reality, I really wanted short-term non-monogamous sexual companionship. That would be an example of me being mode three. If I was, if it was identified that I was doing that on a regular, semi-regular basis, my credibility would diminish. And finally, mode four. Mode four is when you're straightforward, similar to mode one, but you have a lot of undertones of anger, frustration, bitterness, misogyny towards women. You had that underlying attitude like, all you bitches ain't shit. Fuck all you bitches. Y'all all nothing but scandalous bitches and hoes. If, if it was known that I was having that attitude towards women, I would lose credibility. I would lose credibility. You can't call yourself a self-help guru or some type of expert if you don't have credibility. So... The two things I want to discuss related to that is one, on yesterday's video, you heard me in the latter part of the video talking about mainstream media because a lot of people have recently taken pot shots of me saying that, Alan, you almost put place too much emphasis and, and put too much stock into the credibility of mainstream media. I notice a lot of people these days because social media has become more popular that a lot of people want to almost totally disregard the value of various factions of mainstream media. They treat mainstream media like it's the enemy. Like it's the enemy. There's some, not all people, but there's a good percentage of people that nowadays they treat, and Donald Trump has almost contributed to that because he's called like CNN, he refers to CNN and some other out, mainstream media outlets as fake news. He said they, they tend to put a lot of heavily slanted news. And that's why a lot of people don't trust mainstream media, particularly as it relates to politics, because they feel like some networks are tend to lean heavily towards the democratic viewpoint, whereas other outlets tend to lean heavily on to the right wing or Republican side of things. Like Fox is known for being a right wing mainstream media outlet. Fox is known for being a right-wing mainstream media outlet. Conversely, CNN is known for being a left-wing mainstream media outlet. So people on the left wing don't trust Fox. People on the right wing don't trust CNN because they feel like they're too slanted. But the reality is, man, most top-notch mainstream media outlets one thing they do, and if you know anything about journalism, if you went to journalism school or you had friends or relatives that did or you just generally know about it yourself, they vet, vet their sources. They vet their sources. I'll give you one simple example. When I was, uh, I had my name briefly mentioned in Black Enterprise Magazine. Black Enterprise Magazine. And when they got in contact with me, they did at least a, a medium degree of vetting, meaning that I had to send them a copy of my driver's license so I could prove that they were actually talking to Alan Roger Curry. They wanted to make sure they're talking to Alan Roger Curry and not somebody who's pretending to be Alan Roger Curry. That's what most medium level mainstream media outlets are going to do. They're going to vet at least if at bare minimum, they're going to vet you to find out, are you really who you are? Because they don't want to look stupid. Because then they can get sued. Let's say they got in contact with somebody who they thought was Alan Roger Curry, but it was really, I don't know, some guy named Michael Johnson. And he gave them an interview acting like he was me. And then they published the interview and I come and say, hey, I'm Alan Roger Curry. Who is that you talk to? That ain't me. I could sue them. 
thought I'd turn off my phone. I hear it ring. I can sue them. So that's the minimum level of vetting you got to do if you work for at least a medium tier mainstream media outlet, which, you know, I'm going to go there. Most people on YouTube would fail that. They would fail just a medium level of vetting because as you've heard me point out before, a lot of people on YouTube do not use their real birth certificate names. They use nicknames, street names, and pseudonyms. See, that doesn't fly with mainstream media. That doesn't fly with mainstream media. Mainstream media is not going to feature you in a, new, a major newspaper article or a magazine article or interview you on national television or, or broadcast syndicated radio if they don't know your fucking real name. And at least something about your background. I'm going to tell you a movie to watch that, that deals with this whole issue. And you know, when, if anybody knows, number one, people, most people should know I'm a movie buff. I'm a major movie buff. And more specifically, I'm a major fan of a film director named Michael Mann. Michael Mann. He, he was the uh, writer and director of a movie called Heat. And he directed a movie called um, Collateral, which I've seen almost 100 times. And he also directed a movie called The Insider with Russell Crowe and Al Pacino. The Insider. If you haven't seen that movie already, watch that movie. Watch that movie. It deals a lot. It deals very heavily with what I'm talking about. Actually, it deals with two things I've recently talked about in my videos. One, the issue of the credibility of mainstream media. And number two, remember when I said that if you fuck with corporate America's money, that they will find a way to fuck with you, and in extreme cases, they will find a way to kill you? Watch the insider. Watch the fucking insider. Man. Number one, Al Pacino plays a 60 Minutes producer named Low Bergman, who's a real guy. Low Bergman. Watch how thorough Low Bergman is in vetting Russell Crowe, who plays Jeffrey Wigand. Jeffrey Wigand, who was a well-known whistleblower of the tobacco industry. To give you the brief gist of the story, everybody knows the tobacco industry was, was one of the most powerful corporations. And Jeffrey Wigand was a chemist for one of the major tobacco companies. And what he wanted to blow the whistle on is the fact that cigarette companies were putting addictive elements in cigarettes to help them sell. But they weren't telling the general public that. They were putting elements in their cigarettes that were that would cause people to become addicted to those cigarettes. It would be like if fast food companies were putting certain food additives in their food that would cause you to become addicted to their food, which they do. <laughs> if you don't think they don't, you're naive. They do. I know a guy who used to work for a very popular fast food chain. I'm not going to say their name. He was a food chemist. Trust me. There, there's food additives in food to make you want to come back to that particular fast food place to get food from there. But anyway, Jeffrey Wigand became what's known in the corporate world as a whistleblower. And guess what happened when he became a whistleblower? They tried to kill that motherfucker. They put a bomb in the back of his backyard where his daughters play. They wanted to kill that motherfucker. If you work for a major corporation, like let's say hypothetically, I don't know, you work for Chevrolet Motors and you work for a factory where Chevrolet uh, produced cars and you find out that they was, had some kind of mechanical flaw 
that was leading to act, fatal accidents. And you know exactly why. And the company came to you and said, well, we need you to keep this quiet. But you say, no, I'm going to tell the general public that y'all got this mechanical flaw. You think your life going to be safe after that? If you get the potential to cause them to lose hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars, you think your life will be safe after that? Come on. You're not that stupid. You'd be a marked man. <laughs> You'd be a marked man. Particularly if they were able to get to you before you went public. If they were able to get to you before you went public, now, once you go public, then if they were to do harm to you, everybody would know they did harm to you. But if they got to you before you went public, Oh, shit. Nigga, you dead. <laughs> you dead. You as good as dead. But anyway, watch that movie. Watch that movie. The Insider. Yeah, watch that movie. Again, that movie covers two issues, man. See, 60 Minutes. I don't know how many of you watch. I, I, I pretty much watch that show regularly. 60 Minutes is one of the considered one of the top two to three most highly esteemed, well respected television news programs in really television history. And one of the reasons why is because the reporters who work on that show and the producers who work on that show, they go the extra mile to vet people. They vet the shit out of people. New York Times generally does that. Washington Post generally does that. Chicago Tribune does that. Los Angeles Times. Wall Street Journal. Those type of publications, man, they gonna vet the shit out of you, man. Again, I'll use myself as an example. Let's say a major newspaper wants to interview me about being a dating coach, but they haven't properly vetted me. Let's say they, wanted, they do an interview of me, but they haven't properly vetted me. But then it comes out later that I have a rape convention, a rape conviction on my criminal record or that I've been accused of being a pedophile or some kind of sex offender or that I'm a homosexual. Not only would I lose credibility as a dating coach for single heterosexual men, but the publication that did the interview with me would lose credibility. That would make them look stupid. You think they want that? They're going to vet the shit out of me. They're going to want to talk to people who've interacted with me, who know me personally. They're going to want to talk to childhood friends of mine, people I went to middle school with, people I went to high school with, people I went to college with, ex-girlfriends of mine, ex-lovers of mine, my family members. They're going to want to talk to all those type of people before they agree to do an interview with me. They ain't going to just take my word on shit. They ain't going to want me to show them a birth given first of all, to show that I'm really Alan Roger Curry. A lot of you guys here on YouTube, man, y'all be following motherfuckers and y'all know shit about them. How many of y'all know Alpha Male Strategy's real name? Raise your hand. What's his real name? What's his birth certificate name? I bet 99.9% .9 of y'all don't even know, but y'all following him. Where did he go to high school? I bet mean, none of y'all don't know and don't care. All y'all care about, man, as long as he help me get some pussy, man, that's all I care about. <laughs> that's all I care about. As long as he help me get laid, I don't care about what's his real name and where he went to high school and shit. But mainstream media does. Mainstream media would never interview Alpha Male Strategies unless they knew what his real name was what his background was, where he went to high school. They investigate if he has a criminal record. Because if they don't, they potentially would end up looking stupid. But yet, y'all motherfuckers on YouTube, man, y'all be following motherfuckers. Hey, you know what that's called? That's called blind following someone blindly. When you follow someone, but you haven't vetted them, you don't know anything about their background? That means you're blindly following someone. I don't blindly follow anybody. I don't, I don't have anybody as a role model or a, a mentor or a teacher of mine, somebody that I would take advice from if I haven't done some degree of vetting of their background. 
Like me, you can go on my Wikipedia page and find out the basics about me. My hometown, Gary, Indiana. Went to high school, W-I-R-T, Wirt High School. Graduated in 1981. Attended Indiana University. I have a bachelor's degree in economics with a minor in psychology and theater and drama. Did one year of graduate business school at the Kelly School of Business. Used to work at a number of uh, entertainment movie studios and television studios. I worked at NBC. I've worked at Paramount Pictures, Warner Brothers, 20th Century Fox, Sony, Columbia. Worked for Indiana University as a, as a programming coordinator for a mentoring program. My shit's out there, man. A lot of people on YouTube, man, y'all be following. Y'all don't know shit about that. Some people could be convicted murderers. Y'all wouldn't know. They could be convicted rapists. Y'all wouldn't know. They could be pedophiles or sex offenders. Y'all wouldn't know. Y'all don't know where the fuck these motherfuckers did. Yeah, they could be still, they could be a cocaine drug dealer. How would you all know? As long as they help me get some pussy, man, that's all I care about. That's all I care about. So yeah, man, when you hear when you hear a lot of like, I don't know, tension in my voice when I'm evaluating some of the other YouTube content creators. And the people who follow them, why well, I almost have a shaking my damn head type attitude in my voice. That's why. Because I'm like, how do you motherfuckers be following people that y'all don't know shit about? Y'all don't even know their real birth certificate name. That blows my fucking mind. I'm not saying everybody should be like me. I'm not necessarily saying everybody should be like me. But from a for a guy like me, that blows my mind, man. That you have guys on YouTube that can have hundreds of followers, thousands of followers, tens of thousands of followers, and people don't even know the motherfucker's real name. I can't roll like that, man. I could never roll like that, man. If I'm going to follow you as, again, as some type of advisor of mine, mentor of mine, role model of mine, teacher of mine, nigga, I, did, I need to know what your grandmother's middle name is. I need to know the first names of your children. I need to know as much about your background as fucking possible. That's why when most major universities and colleges, most college professors have a web page that gives pretty much as much stuff about their background as possible to establish that professor's credibility, man. You can't be going to college and learning from a professor, you don't know shit about him? Who the fuck with intelligence does that shit? Some of, you, some of y'all on the social media and on, in the YouTube space, y'all don't even care about people's credibility. Like, y'all be taking dating advice from people that nobody has vouched for. Nobody has vouched for. What do I mean, vouch for? Say, when you earn a high school diploma, have you ever thought about what it means? Some of y'all probably don't even know what it means to get a high school diploma or college degree. When you go to high school and get a high school diploma, that diploma doesn't represent just that you finished 12 years of schooling. What that represents is that your city school system, okay, like I went to school in Gary, Indiana. And the, the governing body is called the Gary Community School Corporation. That's who presented me with my high school diploma. When they present me with my high school diploma, what they're basically saying with that diploma is we, we, the administration of the Gary Community School Corporation, we vouch for Alan Roger Curry. We vouch that he has a basic understanding of American English, mathematics, science. He knows how to 
function as a United States citizen, as an adult United States citizen, as a basic human being, he can generally function without adult supervision. He knows how to function in society without constant adult supervision. That's what that diploma is saying. When I go to Indiana University and earn a college degree from Indiana University in the field of economics, what that's saying is the administration of Indiana University vouches for Alan Roger Curry. We vouch for the fact that he has a basic fundamental understanding of the field of economics. And that he has the potential to be employed in a job or career that is directly or indirectly related to the field of economics. Let's say I was to pursue a PhD, whether it be in psychology or sociology or economics. I've talked about this before. That's the most rigorous credential you're going to pursue in most universities is a PhD. PhD, they're going to make sure you don't have just a basic understanding like you would with a bachelor's degree. They're going to make sure you have a thorough understanding of the field of psychology or sociology or economics, that you, have a, that you know that field pretty much backwards and forwards so that you never talk out of your ass, which a lot of people on YouTube do. They talk out of their ass. They're going to make sure you now have a thorough knowledge of, of those fields. And then furthermore, not only are they going to make sure you got a thorough knowledge of that field before they award you a PhD, but then they're going to ask you to submit what's known as a dissertation. Dissertation. What does a dissertation represent? Dissertation represents that not only do you have a thorough knowledge of your chosen field, such as psychology or sociology or economics, but it represents that you have something new, unique, and original to add to the field. That you, you're not only capable of quoting and repeating and regurgitating other people's content and works, but that you have something new, unique, and original to add to the field of psychology or to the field of sociology or to the field of economics. That's the purpose. That's the main thing of the dissertation. See, as a dating coach, I didn't just come out of nowhere and announce that I'm Alan Roger Curry, the dating coach. Go to my acknowledgement section of my 2006 version of Mo One and look at the beginning, the acknowledgements. Look how many names on there. Look how many names on there. All those names you see in the acknowledgement section of like my friends, relatives, and acquaintances, those are people who are willing to vouch for me that Alan Roger Curry knows what the fuck he's talking about and that his advice is worthy of being listened to. That's what that means. People I went to high school with, people I went to college with, people I've just interacted with in my general adult life, they're vouching for me that Alan Roger Curry is not just talking out his ass. He knows what the fuck he's talking about. How many people that you you guys listen to on YouTube have people who vouch for somebody? Like, some, if somebody calls himself a dating coach, do they have a sibling that's vouching for him publicly? A cousin that's vouching for him publicly? Somebody they went to high school with that's vouching for him publicly? Somebody they went to college with that's vouching for him publicly? Somebody that they served in the armed services with that's vouching for them publicly? I'm not just talking about the people who follow them on YouTube who's one of their YouTube subscribers or Patreon subscribers. I'm talking about somebody they've interacted with in real life. Who have they interacted with in real life that is vouching for them? It can, again, it could be a sibling, a parent, a child, a former business colleague, somebody they went to high school with, middle school with, college with, served in armed services with, somebody that they've had regular interaction with in real life. Who's vouching for that person? Who's vouching for their credibility? Who's willing to say, this person you listen to knows what the fuck they're talking about? 
they are worthy of being listened to. Again, I'm, I'm not talking about somebody who's just a basic YouTube subscriber or a basic Patreon subscriber. I'm talking about somebody in their real life, somebody that they spend considerable time with. Who's vouching for them? Most notable person that vouches for me, probably more than anybody, would be my brother, Stephen. He's the one who persuaded me to write my first book, Mo One. He goes to bat for me all the time with Mo One. Now, you can say he has a biased opinion on me because he's my blood brother, but still, at least he's somebody I interact with in real life. I know some people on YouTube, they don't even have a sibling or a cousin or a family relative that vouches for them. What does that say in you following them? What does that say about you following somebody that nobody from their personal life vouches for them? Who's hung around them for a number of weeks, months, years, even decades. But yet you following them. And you wonder why I'm I'm always doing these videos where I'm essentially like having that attitude, like shaking my damn head at both the content creators on here, many of them, not all of them, but many of them, as well as even equally, if not more so, a lot of people who follow them. Because y'all follow motherfuckers y'all don't know shit about. Again, y'all don't know their real name. Y'all don't know what high school they went to. You don't know anything that's really, truly relevant or pertinent to that person's personal background. Y'all don't know shit about these motherfuckers, but yet y'all follow them blindly. I don't even understand that, man. That ain't how the real world works. So all you people taking jabs at mainstream media, you can take, I don't, you know, I'm not saying mainstream media is flawless. I have my own share of criticisms of various factions of mainstream media. But I'm telling you again, top the top tier factions of mainstream media, if nothing else, they going to vet your ass before they feature you in some type of interview or article or whatever. They going to vet your ass, man. They going to vet you to make sure, number one, you are who you say you are. And they going to vet you to find out, does this person have the credibility to be talking about what he's talking about? Does he have the credibility to be giving people in the general public advice? Y'all listen to people who ain't been vetted, man. Y'all listen to people who ain't been vetted, man. Again, I've been on national TV. I've been interviewed on national broadcast syndicated radio. I've had my name featured in major magazines such as Essence Magazine and Black Enterprise. I've had my name featured in Chicago Tribune, Chicago Sun-Times, and Northwest Indiana Tribune. If not one or two other, oh, Guatemala. I was featured in a Guatemalan magazine, one or two other international mag, uh, newspapers. I mean, not magazines, newspapers. I got credibility, man. I didn't just come out of my mom's basement and just come on YouTube when they turn on a webcam and a microphone and just announce, hey, I'm a dating coach. Motherfuckers in real life vouch for Alan Roger Curry. They vouch for Alan Roger Curry. And my final thing before I wrap up. And then I also talk about this in my Patreon exclusive portion. That, that also deals with the credibility of some people on YouTube, particularly a lot of the, the, the heterosexual men here on YouTube. Not only the black ones, but even white ones, Hispanic ones, Asian ones, whoever else, non-black ones. How can y'all call, present yourself as some sort of dominant alpha male, but y'all whining and complaining and bitching about women all the time? That's incongruent. If you're not familiar with that word, there's congruent. I talk about this in my mom one book. There's congruent behavior and incongruent. This goes back to my example of the personal nutritionist. If I was marketing myself as a personal nutritionist, 
But yet, I was, you always saw me eating hot fudge sundaes and cookies and peach cobbler and all kinds of other bullshit junk food. That would represent that I'm exhibiting incongruent behavior. I'm espousing one thing, but my behavior is not supporting what I'm espousing. I'm espousing one thing, but my behavior is not uh, supporting what I'm espousing. See, that's one of the things I teach men to look for. You know my five archetypes, reciprocator, rejector, wholesome pretender, erotic hypocrite, manipulative time waster. See, reciprocators and rejectors, they exhibit congruent behavior. Meaning that when a reciprocator is interested in sharing your company, either in a romantic manner or a strictly sexual manner, they're going to quickly and straightforwardly let you know that. Their behavior is going to support their interest. Same with a rejector. When a rejector has no interest in sharing your company in a romantic or strictly sexual manner, they're going to quickly and straightforwardly let you know that. Their behavior is going to support their lack of interest in you. Everything about a reciprocator's behavior and a rejector's behavior is going to be congruent. On the flip side, when a woman's a wholesome pretender, or an erotic hypocrite or manipulative time waster, their behavior to one degree or another is going to be incongruent, meaning that they're going to say things or they're going to try to present themselves as one type of woman, but their behavior, their actions, their behavior, their, their habits is not going to really support that. For example, wholesome pretenders are going to present themselves as an innocent, wholesome, strictly monogamy-oriented good girl but as you further examine their behavior, you're going to see that they're more kinkier than what meets the eye and that they're more promiscuous or polyamorous than what meets the eye. Erotic hypocrites are going to try to give you the impression that they only have sex with men who have a high degree of career success, financial success, who are highly educated, who have a high degree of social status. But their behavior is not going to support that. They've actually had sex with men who weren't necessarily successful in their careers, that didn't have a lot of money, that didn't have a lot of status, that weren't necessarily highly educated, incongruent. Manipulative time wasters are going to give you the impression that they have some degree of interest in you romantically or strictly sexually, but nothing about their behavior is going to support that. Like if you try to kiss on them or touch on them, they're going to be like, no, stop, don't do that. You try to have lengthy, detailed explicit conversation about sex, they're going to be like, can we talk about something else? Incongruent. A lot of you men on YouTube are incongruent. On one end, you're whining and bitching about women. But on the flip side, you, you all, a lot of you guys who do all this whining and bitching will try to say, suggest that you're a dominant alpha male. That is bullshit. That is bullshit. Because see, if you're dominant, if you're a truly dominant alpha male, what does that mean? That means that the people you interact with, and particularly the women you interact with, they acquiesce to you. They acquiesce to you. What does that word mean? To acquiesce to someone means to, at maximum, be very obedient and submissive to that person and at minimum, it means you show that person a certain casual, cordial level of respect and deference. Respect and deference. That's what it means to acquiesce to someone. At maximum, that person is very obedient and submissive to you. And at minimum, it means that person is cordially respectful and deferential to you. A dominant alpha male has no reason to whine and complain about women because women generally do what the fuck they tell them to do and behave in a manner that at minimum is respectful and deferential and at maximum obedient and submissive. So they would have no reason to whine and complain about women. Most women I deal with romantically and sexually, they do what the fuck I tell them to do or else I don't deal with them anymore. It's that simple. If 
I deal with a woman in a romantic manner or a strictly sexual manner, if they're not obedient and submissive to me or at minimum respectful and deferential to me, I don't fuck with them anymore. They're dismissed. So there's no reason for me to get on YouTube and whine and complain about them. Because I don't fuck with them anymore. There's only two types of guys who go and generally, repeatedly, on a regular or semi-regular basis, whine and complain about women. It's either men who've been consistently rejected and ignored by women, which means you've never really been given the opportunity to socialize with women, particularly in a romantic or strictly sexual manner, because you've always been rejected, you've always been ignored. So of course you're going to whine and complain about women, because you've never really been given the opportunity to socialize with women and have a series of interactions with them that was of a romantic nature or a strictly sexual nature. So of course you're frustrated. Of course you're bitter. In some cases, of course you're misogynistic. In real extreme cases, of course you want to cause them physical harm. You might want to kidnap them and torture them, rape them or date rape them or kill them. Because you're, you're being denied the opportunity to even socially interact with a woman. So of course you're pissed off. And you're going to get on YouTube and bitch about it. Then the second group of guys who are going to do a lot of whining, complaining and bitching are guys that have been given some degree of opportunities to socially interact with women, but they've either A, been relegated to being nothing more than a woman's purely platonic male friend, which over a period of time is going to leave men frustrated. They don't get to get their dick wet. Their dick will never see the inside of a woman's mouth, the inside of a woman's vagina, or the inside of a woman's ass. Even the inside of a woman's hand for a hand job. You're just their play brother. You're just their buddy. You might as well be gay. You might as well be their gay male friend. It don't even matter that you're heterosexual. Because you, you ain't going to never get no sexual satisfaction in their company. So it's understandable that you get on YouTube and whine and bitch about it. Subcategory B would be you given the opportunity to date women or have sex with women, but women treat you like a beta male bitch boy. They treat you like their personal cucko. They tell you what to do. They tell you if you don't act right, they're going to they gonna take away access to their pussy. They punk you. They consistently act spoiled with you, argumentative with you, entitled with you, highly materialistic with you. They generally disrespect you and your manhood. They treat you like you their bitch because you are their bitch. They treat you like you lucky to even be able to share their company. And so once they have dumped you because they, they bored with your ass or you broke up with them because they, they brought a guy home and fucked him in front of your face or they fucked your best friend or your co-worker, you get on YouTube and whine and bitch about them and say all women ain't shit. But the reality is you allowed those women to punk you and treat you like a bitch. You allowed it. For days, for weeks, for months, even years. You allowed them to treat you like a bitch. Yeah, I know you hate me emphasizing like that. You got treated like a bitch. <laughs> Now I'm gonna get on YouTube and say all women ain't shit. They shouldn't be they they shouldn't be pursued. All you men should go mink top and stop interacting with you. These women treated me like a bitch. But who allowed it? You did. You allowed these women to treat you like a bitch. Just like that bully in elementary school treated you like he you were his bitch. He said, Give me your lunch money. He said, Here it is. Here's, your, here's my lunch money. Just don't beat me up. Just don't beat me up. Here's my lunch money. Now, I don't condone bullying. I ain't making light of bullying. I don't like bullying. I hate bullies. I hate bullies. So I don't want to, my last comment to be misconstrued as I'm in favor of bullies. I hate bullies. But 
I pointed that example out to say that you, you there comes a point in your life you got to stand up to the bully. You got to say, hey, I ain't giving you my lunch money. Whoop my ass. If you got to whoop my ass every day, go ahead and do it. But you ain't getting my motherfucking lunch money. And guess what? 90% of the time, they're going to leave you alone. Once they see you stand up for yourself with some backbone, you might have to take a punch to your jaw. You might have to get a black eye. But you know what? Hey, ain't no bully going to just beat you up every day to take your lunch money. They're going to be like, okay, this dude stand up for himself. I'm going to leave him alone. Can't let motherfuckers just punk you all your life. Bully you all your motherfucking life. And that don't, that's not exclusive to men. Women will punk you. Women will bully you if you allow them to. They will punk you. Trust me. Women will punk you sometimes worse than a member of your own gender will. In the same way a man punks you by saying, if you don't do what I say, I'm going to cause you some physical harm. That's usually another man's way of bullying you. Or in some cases, uh, a, a, another version of male bullying would be financial. Like a boss, an asshole boss says, if you don't behave the way I want you to, I'm going to fire you and deny you an opportunity to earn a living. Women bully you by saying, if you don't act the way I want you to act, I'm going to deny you my sexual attention and companionship. And even more so, I'm going to deny you both my sexual and my non-sexual attention and companionship. Oh, please don't. Please don't. I'll do anything to maintain your sexual attention and companionship and your non-sexual attention. Please don't ignore me. Please don't ignore me. Please don't deny me your friendship. Please don't deny me the opportunity to be your bitch boy. Your cuckoo, please, God, please don't. Then the woman says, okay, be my bitch then. You better be a good bitch. No dominant male is on YouTube whining and complaining about women. No truly dominant male with backbone who's had women treat them at minimum respectfully and deferentially and at maximum has been obedient and submissive to them is going to be on YouTube whining and complaining about the behavior of women. The only time I ever whined and complained about women was in the workplace. Why? Because I felt powerless. Because I had to follow the orders of a woman. I'm a chauvinist. I don't like taking orders from women. I don't like taking orders really from anybody, male or female, but definitely women. I don't like women telling me what to do. In that regard, I'm a blatant chauvinist. It always bothered me when I had to work for, I had a female supervisor or female boss. Because I didn't like taking orders from no fucking woman. But as you know, my father laid me out. He said, you ain't in a position to whine and bitch. You ain't in a position to work for yourself and be your own boss. Yet, I am now. But at that time, I wasn't in a position. He basically like, you got to suck it up. In my Patreon portion, I'm going to go into more detail about being a dominant male. It won't be too lengthy because I've actually already covered this in a recent Patreon. But uh, I'm going to just touch on it a little bit more. Join me in my Patreon exclusive portion.